Google's poster boys for Android Oreo, the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL are finally here. However, the Pixel 2 XL hasn't exactly gotten off to a great start given the slew of issues users have been reporting ever since it went on sale. This kind of negative buzz is sure to make any user think twice before buying this phone, especially when it costs 73,000 rupees in India. But how bad is it really and how does it really affect day to day? Let's find out. The just black version of the Pixel 2 XL looks great and the matte finish offers good grip without attracting too many fingerprints. It doesn't exactly feel metal and that's because of the coating applied over the aluminium unibody chassis. The buttons are placed within easy reach and the low weight coupled with rounded edges make it easy to slip this phone in and out of your pocket during daily usage. Google has made some slight aesthetic changes compared to the original Pixel such as a smaller glass panel on the back. The USB Type-C port is the only physical connection as the new Pixel phones have dropped 3.5mm headphone socket. Google provides an adapter in the box but sadly no Type-C headphones. The Pixel XL being the larger of the two models gets an 18 to 9 6 inch QHD plus P OLED screen which produces sharp visuals and has good sunlight legibility. However, colors aren't really as vibrant as you get on competing products with OLED screens and we haven't really had any burn-in issues on our review unit in the week that we've been using it. Now Google has promised a software fix for this soon which should give users more control over the color profiles and also some tweaks to the UI to work around the image retention problem. On the other hand, we did have one annoying problem which seemingly can't be fixed as it appears to be a trait of the display more than an actual issue. We're talking about the blue tint which is visible when you look at anything on the screen at an angle. It's really annoying and looks worse when nightlight is on. The Pixel 2 XL uses the Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 mobile platform which is now a proven flagship SoC. There's also 4GB of RAM and a choice of 64GB or 128GB of storage. There isn't any micro SD card slot and the SIM only accepts a single nano SIM. We like the fact that the Pixel 2 XL also has IP67 certification for dust and water resistance, front firing stereo speakers and Bluetooth 5. However, it does lack wireless charging. Software has always been Google's strong suit and that's on full display with the Pixel 2 XL. On the home screen, you'll see an at a glance widget for weather, time and calendar appointments while the search bar has been moved to the bottom with an easier reach of your thumb. You can now access Google Assistant by squeezing the sides of the phone thanks to the new Active Edge feature. The sensitivity can be adjusted so you don't accidentally trigger this shortcut. Now playing is another new feature. The Pixel 2 XL can automatically identify any song playing in the background and show its name on the lock screen. This feature actually works offline too since the phone has a local database of popular songs to match it against. It might not replace Shazam or Soundhound entirely anytime soon but it's a cool feature to have. Another neat software feature is Google Lens, which is currently in beta and only available on Pixel devices. Tapping the icon in the Google Photos app fetches contextual information about the scene itself or any object in the picture. It works quite well and in our experience it was able to recognize addresses, phone numbers and even species of flowers. We used the Pixel 2 XL as a primary phone for a few days and didn't really feel it slowing down at any point. It booted quickly and apps loaded quickly as well. The phone doesn't really heat up much either, even when gaming. There's Google Duo integration in the dialer app too, so you can make a video call straight from your contact lists. The display has a sharp resolution which is good for watching movies. While the color dullness did bother us at first, we eventually got used to it. However, the blue tint was really annoying throughout and that's something buyers probably will have to live with. The volume level of the stereo speakers really depends on the app and the content. At full volume, some shows streamed through Netflix weren't too loud but we found that Apple Music was better. Camera quality is once again the main star of the Pixel 2 XL. The rear camera has gotten a major upgrade over its predecessor and now sports a much wider aperture as well as optical image stabilization. Image quality is excellent in daylight shots with very good detail and colors. Low light shots are good too but landscape shots tend to get a bit noisy. There's a portrait mode that works just as well on the Pixel 2 XL as it would on any dual camera flagship of today and the beauty of it is that it's all done through software. Video recording maxes out at 4K but only at 30fps and not 60. Stabilization quality has improved greatly compared to the first generation. The recorded video is a lot smoother but it's still a bit noisy in low light. The camera app is easy to use but a bit too bare bones. 
there's not much in terms of advanced features such as manual adjustment or raw shooting. We're happy with the battery life of the Pixel 2 XL, as with regular use, we easily managed to go well beyond a day. We even managed a day and a half with frugal usage. Fast charging works really well too, giving us a 90% charge from an empty tank in about an hour. There's a lot to like about Google's new flagship, but its price in India seems a bit excessive, especially when you factor in the average display and all its issues. If you prefer vibrant colors, then right now, you're better off with the iPhone 8 Plus at the same price or even the Galaxy Note 8 which costs less. The Pixel 2 XL definitely has the edge compared to other Android phones when it comes to software, so if that's important to you, then you could consider the smaller Pixel 2. If you definitely want to buy a Pixel 2 XL, it would make sense to wait for Google to fix these initial issues first. Maybe the price will come down to a more reasonable level after a few months. So thanks for watching our review of the Google Pixel 2 XL. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Gadgets360.